Since the dawn of time, man has come up with wonderful ideas. City called Ashgabat that's completely decorated in the whitest marble you've ever seen. That turn out to be short-lived, poorly executed, or just straight up stupid. But for city planners, there must be something even more painful about your perfectly constructed city being left to rot without the appreciation it deserved. From an abandoned mining island to a ghost utopia in the middle of China, here are the 15 largest abandoned cities in the world. <sighs> Number 15. Hashima Island. Honestly, we could probably fill this whole list with abandoned islands on the continent of Asia, but very few of them could measure up to the one more commonly referred to as Battleship Island. Sadly, it does not also function as a Transformers-like battleship. Sorry, I checked multiple times. Situated around 9 miles from the city of Nagasaki and boasting an impressive population of zero, according to a 2016 census that nobody took. Hashima Island is just one of 505 abandoned or otherwise uninhabited islands in the Nagasaki Prefecture. But it wasn't always this way. In 1887, the island became home to several undersea coral mines that became a big part of the industrialization of Japan, requiring as many as 5,259 people to live nearby just to work it. But by 1974, the coral was running short, and when the mines closed, the residents went back to the mainland. The place has been abandoned ever since. The island is around 16 acres in total mass, making it only slightly larger than the island of Manhattan, and all of the apartment blocks and other buildings remain pretty much intact. Battleship Island is basically just a big city with no life, which is slightly disappointing, but I remain hopeful that the island is an Optimus Prime type transformer in waiting. Before we go on, we have a cool challenge for y'all that will take 5 seconds to complete. Let's make a deal. Just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell and you will get 10 years of amazing luck and fortune. Try it, it actually works. Number 14. Orodos Kangbashi, China in an unusual turn, the city of Ordos Kengbashi is one of the few cities in the world to be highlighted both for its impressive beauty and magnificence, as well as its complete lack of, well, anything. This is not just a ghost town, this is a ghost utopia. In 2003, construction began on what was heralded to be the newest major city in China, an architectural marvel to be built in the middle of the empty desert that would provide modern homes for over a million people. Eventually, that number was brought down to around 300,000, which even now seems optimistic. In 2009, publications began reporting that the city was a ghost town almost entirely devoid of life, a home for seemingly nobody. The reason was that, Apparently, the grand structures were allegedly too big for residents to enjoy comfortably, and the need to drive just about everywhere in the city resulted in no physical life on the streets. Technically, the city of Ordos Kengbashi is not abandoned, but those that have been would tell you that it certainly feels that way. Few people visit, and even fewer move there. Despite being home to 100,000 people, and despite every apartment being sold to people outside of the city, the place is basically one big Ghost Utopia. How delightful. Number 13, Ashgabat, Turkmenistan. A quick look at Ashgabat and you could easily be convinced that this is not an abandoned city. But the funny thing is, the streets are shockingly empty during the day, almost like a ghost town. It's the capital of Turkmenistan, it's home to a million people, and there's so much that would appeal to tourists, it all just seems impossible. Yet Ashgabat is often called the city of the dead, and it's pretty easy to see why. Hint, it has nothing to do with zombies. Turkmenistan has developed something of a reputation 
reputation among world travelers, who have come to refer to it as the New North Korea, due to its sheltered, yet bizarrely glossy, capital and dislike for basic human rights. Ashgabat is a city designed to be seen by the world, a large construct made up of stadiums, hotels, apartment buildings, and structures built to break world records, including, bizarrely, the world's largest indoor Ferris wheel. But the city imposes strict laws on those within it. It's illegal to say anything remotely negative about the leader, and it's illegal to leave the city limits. For example, if these laws are broken, people are known to disappear. Where they go, nobody knows. In its own special way, Ashgabat is a twisted version of a Disneyland area, a constructed area designed to evoke a feeling. Just don't say the wrong thing, or that feeling will be fear. Maybe. We don't know what happens. Number 12. Ruby, Arizona as far as ghost towns go, there may be none better preserved than the sleepy town of Ruby, Arizona. In this abandoned ghost town in the Arizona desert mountains. Nestled at the bottom of Arizona State, Ruby is a long abandoned mining town that is almost exactly as it was back in the early 20th century. In fact, there are still two people living in the town. In the late 19th century, miners working at the foot of Montana Peak set up a camp in a town that they called Bear Valley, a little area in Santa Cruz County, Arizona. Then, in 1922, the owner of the camp's general store established the post office, naming it Ruby after his wife, and rechristening it Bear Valley forever in the process. Despite being home to the gruesome Ruby murderers, something to look into if you're into true crime, Ruby still proved charming enough that up to 1,200 people People made it their home throughout the 1930s. But when the mine closed in 1940, things took a turn financially, and by the end of 1941, the whole town was abandoned. Today, Ruby is one of two preserved mining towns in Arizona, and the two residents often give guests guided tours of the once prosperous town. Well, it's not like they have anything else to do. Number 11. Tianduchung, China. They often say that imitation is the best form of flattery, but this really takes it to a whole other level. Only 2,000 live there full time, making it feel more like a ghost town. Tiandu Chung is one of several European clone cities constructed in China, a smaller scale version of Paris, constructed in rural China. Listen, it's weird, but it's impressive. Tiandu Chung is just one in a series of Chinese-built Western copycat cities, replicating the architecture of monuments of cities like London, Venice, and even Wyoming, if you can believe that. Measuring around 12 square miles, Tiandu Chung has everything you could possibly want from Paris, a 354-foot tall replica of the Eiffel Tower, blocks and blocks of Parisian-style apartment buildings, fountains, gardens. The only thing missing, really, is, well, civilization. At the time of opening, the city was labeled a ghost town due to a lack of residents, leaving businesses vacant, apartment blocks empty, and basically rendering the whole thing a big waste of money. As the French would say, oh no! The city has also come under fire by the Chinese government itself, who believe that there is not enough traditional Chinese culture present within these cities. Still, development on the city has continued since its construction, and a new metro station may well bring some life to the place. I, for one, am looking forward to the Chinese equivalent of Bikini Bottom. Number 10. Pripyat, Ukraine if there's any city in the world that has a valid reason to be abandoned, it's probably Pripyat. 50,000 people used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. Sitting near the Belarus-Ukraine border, Pripyat was founded for one reason, to help serve the nearby Chernobyl nuclear power plant. And we all know how that ended. That's right, this is a radioactive city. Measuring around 7 million and 90,000 square feet in area, Pripyat was designed to be a beautiful home for those that were set to work at the nearby power plant, with cinemas, gyms, playgrounds, and even a public railway station. Sure enough, by 1979, the city had grown to be a home to around 49,000 people, which makes the next part all the more painful. Just one day following the 1986 Chernobyl disaster, the whole city was evacuated. By April 29th, Pripyat had been transformed into a ghost city, as everyone that made it their home was forced to leave. While the city is still uninhabited for obvious reasons, Pripyat is a popular location for tourists and is considered to be relatively safe. While the radiation is pretty low, it's still not the kind of place you'd like to live. But it would be quiet at least. Number 9. 
Oradour sur Glane, France. In June 1944, the sleepy village of Oradour sur Glane was disrupted by the violent arrival of the Nazis. The SS soldiers massacred 642 innocent residents within hours, in what they claimed was a retaliation attack for partisan activity, and the kidnapping of SS commander Helmut Kampf. The town never recovered from the massacre and remains abandoned to this day. Following the defeat of the Nazis, many French officials wanted to rebuild Orador sur Glane, hoping to rid the country of all remnants of the Nazis for good. But General Charles de Gaulle refused to rebuild, insisting that the village would remain intact to remind visitors of the cruelty and barbaric acts that the Nazis inflicted upon those innocents. A new village was later built nearby for future residents, but the old one remained remains standing and open to tourists, and is apparently just as haunting as you would expect from a story like that. What happened at Orador sur Glane is just one in a series of devastatingly tragic moments in history, and one from which the French have never been able to move on. The town is still filled with bicycles, burned out cars, and wrecked buildings that really do stand as a reminder of the atrocities perpetuated by the Nazis. Number 8. Bodie, California. Ghost towns are always pretty creepy, but there's something especially Twilight Zone-ish about Bodie, California. That there's a real Wild West Gold Rush era ghost town. About 75 miles southeast of Lake Tahoe, Bodie is an old mining town in the middle of nowhere, and man, it is creepy. In the 1870s, gold was a hot property in the state of California, all owing to the gold rush craze of the period. But in 1876, gold was discovered in the town of Bodie, leading many opportunistic miners to rush into town and build a mining camp on the site. Just three years later, the town was sighting a 5,000 to 7,000 person population, and producing gold often valued at insanely high figures. As gold rose, the town began building extra amenities including a bank, railroad, jail, 65 saloons, a red light district, a Chinatown, a cemetery, and a brass band. That's pretty impressive for a simple old mining town. But by 1880, Bodie was taking some hits. Across the American West, other towns were having their own mining booms and luring away the get-rich-quick miners that had once built Brody into a thriving city of its own. The town quickly became a family-oriented community, and by the time the last mine closed in 1942, its population was 90. In just 10 years, that number would drop to zero. To this day, the population remains at zero. Number 7. Traco, Italy the Italians have always had a unique way of transforming natural rocks and cliffs into gorgeous palaces and homes. But the old town of Krakow is something particularly impressive, and just a little eerie. It might not be a surprise to know that Krakow is uninhabited when you remember that it's sitting atop a 1,300-foot-tall cliff, but there's more to the eerie silence than just a lot of hiking. As far back as the 8th century BC, Krakow has been home to Italians, Greeks, Romans, many of whom were hoping to avoid the warmongering going on in the world below. Unfortunately, they didn't stop to consider one more pressing concern for a cliffside town. Natural Disasters A devastating series of earthquakes, landslides, and floods forced an exodus of the town's residents in 1963, bringing the final 1,800 inhabitants down to ground level. The town has been uninhabited ever since, probably because it's only a matter of time before catastrophe. To make matters worse, the town has been crumbling since the millennium, with many buildings either reduced to rubble or near to collapse. Events continue to be held in town, but since only 35 people are allowed in the city at once, it's a pretty exclusive guest list. Number 6. Humberstone, Chile. While strange place names are pretty common around the world, there is something about Humberstone that is extra odd. For one, it's undecidedly un-Chilean. In a country that has names like Santiago, Valparaiso, and Pichalemu, Humberstone sounds like someone got confused and mislabeled the map. Well, apparently, that's not quite the case. Although I still think that's what happened. Humberstone is a former mining town located in northern Chile's Atacama Desert, and is named after James Humberstone, a British chemical engineer who made a fortune out of mining the desert for saltpeter, a mineral used to produce fertilizer. During the late 19th 
19th century, Chile was known around the world for its saltpeter, and the mineral was believed to be the product holding the country's economy up. But when World War I broke out, the British banned the export of saltpeter to Germany, forcing the Germans to develop their own materials and all but putting Chile out of business in the process. Despite being completely abandoned since this initial banning, the town's buildings are still intact, with the company store, the bandstand, a hotel, and even a cinema still standing. It's like they never left, but you know, they did. It's basically dead. Number 5. Mandu India Throughout history, India has always been renowned for its phenomenal architecture, from the magnificent Taj Mahal to the Mysore Palace. But one of the most impressive structures is actually the 500-year-old abandoned city of Mandu. And man, it's beautiful. Between 1401 and 1561, Mandu was the wealthy capital of a northern Indian Muslim state and a flourishing fortress town in its own right. But almost 500 years later, the place is completely devoid of life, with no inhabitants, most surprisingly, no Western tourists visiting. Mandu has often been referred to as a treasure trove of Indian history, containing the remnants of palaces, tombs, and monuments. Despite all this time passing, most of the structures are still intact and easy to wander around, allowing visitors to step into a 500-year-old world and take in the impressive sight of ancient Indian architecture. Local visitors often visit the site of Mandu to celebrate the Ganesh Chaturthi, a Hindu festival commemorating the birth of Ganesh, the elephant god. But for Western tourists, this is an almost completely unheard of location, leaving it all but abandoned for much of the year. Number 4. Ferocia Cyprus. Just imagine the sight. Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton, and Bridget Bardot enjoying a beautiful day in the bright Cyprus sunshine in the glorious city of Varosha in the early 1970s. And now imagine that same gorgeous city completely empty, covered with plants, and with the public forbidden from entering. That's pretty much what we're dealing with here. Back in the early 1970s, Ferocia was the most popular tourist destination in all of Cyprus, and one of the most popular in the world. A label that prompted Cypriots to launch hotels and apartment buildings specifically designed for vacationing tourists. Hollywood stars flocked to the city to take in the sights, and tourists from all all around the world soaked up the sun alongside them. It was glorious. Then came 1974. In 1974, amidst the Turkish invasion of Cyprus, the Turkish army managed to gain control of the city, fencing it off and refusing entry to anyone other than the Turkish military. Thousands were forced out of their homes, never to be allowed to return. Since the 1974 invasion, Turkey has maintained power over Varosha, ensuring that it remains forbidden for any member of the public to step foot on its ground. Buildings have decayed, streets have been taken over by plants, and the place has become a notorious ghost town, with seemingly no change on the horizon. Pretty bleak stuff. Number 3. Centralia, Pennsylvania. Billy Joel once proudly sang, We didn't start the fire, but didn't ever clarify to which fire he was referring to. Pennsylvania roads are generally not very good, but uh, generally not this bad. Well, despite the advice of our lawyers, we've come to believe it may well be the Centralia Mine Fire, which really has always been burning since the world's been turning. Well, since 1962. But who really knows how long the world's been turning anyway? At its peak in 1890, Centralia was home to 2,761 residents, many of whom worked for the local mining companies. But by 2017, long after the mining companies had closed, that population had dwindled to just Five. So what was it that drove out all these residents, you ask sarcastically after I mentioned it in the first paragraph? The Centralia Mine Fire. In 1962, a coal seam fire erupted in the mines beneath Centralia, stretching over 8 miles and burning some 300 feet deep. The instability caused by these raging fires made Centralia's roads and houses a dangerous place to live, or even move around on, forcing most residents out to safer areas. The fire is still burning beneath Centralia, and experts have estimated that it will continue to do so for another 250 years. But for legal reasons, Billy Joel had nothing to do with it. That we know of, anyway. Number 2. Balestrino, Italy. This entry is not just about an abandoned hillside town in Italy. It's also a straight-up mystery. 
When even locals are confused about what exactly took place within the city, it really just makes us all the more curious to go explore it. Although that is the start of just about every horror movie, so we should probably give that one a miss. Unlike most other ghost towns in the world, the reason for Balestrino's silence is entirely unknown. Nobody knows why the town was abandoned, or when, or even why, or even by whom. All we know is that the town is still standing, albeit decaying at nature typically speedy pace, and to make matters even more intriguing, the town has been fenced off by authorities, again for reasons that nobody fully understands. Although we can wildly speculate, are they keeping people out or something in? Balestrino is a beautiful town, but it is nothing short of a mystery. Nobody knows what is within the town's walls or even what happened. And given that nobody can even step foot inside of it, it's likely that this mystery will never actually be solved. We'll just have to settle for a quick peek over over the wall and a role in a real life horror movie. Number one. North Brother Island, New York. It doesn't feel like a particularly smart idea to build a hospital on an island, but I suppose that's part of the charm of Brother Island. North Brother Island is one of two islands in New York City's East River, and is probably most well-known to New Yorkers as that island where the building is covered with grass. In 1885, the previously uninhabited North Brother Island became the new home for Riverside Hospital, a facility designed to treat victims of quarantinable diseases like smallpox. But nothing lasts forever, and after decades of treating patients, the hospital closed in the late 1930s, leaving the island once again uninhabited. Shortly after the end of World War II, the island became home to war veterans, and would later be transformed into a 1950s rehab center for young drug addicts. But after that turned into a hostile prison situation, the rehab was shut down in 1963. Yet another case of the island being abandoned. Since 1963, the island has been all but abandoned. While many politicians have sought out uses for it, nothing has ever been approved, and the public has been forbidden from entering. At the time of this video, the island is being used as a sanctuary for shorebirds. Although any island is a sanctuary if humans can't step onto it, right? Which of these abandoned cities would you most love to check out? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.